We are Team 19139 and our project is powering small electronics such as a cell phone with microbial fuel cells. We are delving into this project because the coal industry is prevalent in that almost all processes use it for energy, um, but there's still a heavy impact on the climate as well as toxic effects that has on people. And we wanted to start to explore um, a more renewable way to provide power to not only small electronics, but also large scale processes too, if that's possible. With our microbial fuel cells, not only does it run off of a sludge that is practically infinite in supply, but it is non-toxic, it has zero emissions, and it is powered directly from bacteria that comes out of your home sewer or from a wastewater treatment plant. Our design will feature a double chamber microbial fuel cell. One chamber is the anode and the other chamber is the cathode. The anode contains the bacterial sludge and the cathode contains water. Microbial fuel cells harness electricity from the breakdown of food by bacteria, which is part of an oxidation reduction reaction, or called a redox reaction. In the anode, oxidation occurs where sugar is broken down with water into carbon dioxide, hydrogen ions, and electrons. In the cathode, reduction occurs, where hydrogen ions recombine with oxygen to make water again. This is the end of the redox reaction, and this reaction will repeat as long as the reaction is favored. Our first goal is to design and build a small-scale microbial fuel cell that produces electricity. Each microbial fuel cell will produce 0.3 volts and the total budget will remain under $300. Our second goal is to determine the amount of energy that the microbial fuel cells can provide if scaled up to industrial applications. Our prototype was designed to be easily built using products from your local hardware store or from easily accessible online outlets such as Amazon. We designed our prototype so you can easily follow along and build it yourself through something as simple as an online tutorial. After acquiring our sludge from Trace Rios, we began building our prototype by drilling holes into our plastic tanks to connect the aluminum wiring, salt bridge, and pump. The electrodes were prepared by folding small rectangular sections of aluminum mesh that were spot welded to aluminum wires. The salt bridge was created by drying a mixture of agar agar powder and potassium chloride inside plastic tubing. The wiring allows electrons to travel from the sludge tank to the water tank generating electricity, while the salt bridge conducts hydrogen atoms between the tanks. The air pump is included in our prototype to oxygenate the water, speeding up the redox reaction. Once connected by the wiring and salt bridge, the tanks were prepared to be filled with water and sludge to obtain our experimental results. Once the fuel cells were constructed, an appropriate setup was created for them, including safety precautions. During experimentation, voltage and current measurements were taken using a multimeter and recorded daily into Excel. The fuel cells were measured both alone and in series with the other fuel cells in order to study the voltage in series. Residence time of the sludge in each cell can also be determined by observing the voltage decrease after a certain number of days. Each of the four microbial fuel cells were successfully able to produce 0.3 volts each, and each cell was easily constructed and very simple in design. We successfully charged an iPhone 10 by connecting all four of the cells in series, adding a voltage converter, and by providing an extra amount of current to meet the iPhone detection requirement. The schematic below shows a current and voltage booster in parallel and our four fuel cells in series to power the device. For our results, we had a maximum voltage of 0.357 volts for one cell, and up to 1.13 volts for all four cells connected in series. The maximum power produced was 37.3 microwatts, and the maximum power density was found to be 34.46 milliwatts per cubic meter. 
and all this leads to a potential amount of power for Trace Rios Water Reclamation Facility of 1,427 kilowatts. That's up to over $900,000 in energy per year. That is a very valuable amount of energy. And the supporting calculations can be viewed in the bottom right corner. In an effort to be more energy conscious and efficient, new methods are required. The microbial fuel cell offers a source of clean energy that by its very nature is renewable. The key ingredient of the microbial fuel cell is anaerobic sludge, which can be found in a number of places, like the bottom of a lake or a swamp, or in a septic tank. This MFC system is capable of charging a cell phone with the help of adding an external current source. This MFC design can be implemented into an existing wastewater treatment facility, such as Trace Rios, to produce valuable power with little capital investment. The power output of the MFCs can be improved by changing design parameters, such as using higher quality materials, switching to a single chamber design, using a membrane instead of a salt bridge, switching to continuous flow instead of a batch design. After reviewing our project, we found plenty of room for improvement. The following are the most impactful changes that we would make, given the time and resources to do so. First, we would use reference electrodes in our experiments for a better characterization of the entire system. Next, we would change the cathode and anode materials from aluminum to a carbon-based material. Then, we would take our measurements using a potentiostat, as this can provide more insight that will allow us to understand the MSC system better. And finally, future versions of this project should also test the system connected in parallel rather than in series, and design a continuous sludge feed system. 